You're watching Venture Forward, a video series about vehicle-supported adventure, backcountry exploration, and full-time mobile living. Join us as we discover scenic and interesting places both on and off the beaten path. It's Monday, June 13th, 2022, and it is hot right now in southeastern Pennsylvania. And muggy. And buggy. I already made some headway restoring the Jeep this morning. I went to FC Mobile Restorations, which is an auto and boat upholstery shop in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. I stopped at FC about a month ago to inquire about repairing a torn driver's side seat and also for replacing the mattress up in my camper with something a little thicker and a little bit more comfortable. Well, their work on the mattress is just about done. They had three of the four pieces ready to go this morning, so I have them in the Jeep now, and they were working on the last piece today. The new foam is a three inch stack wrapped in lighter material and it looks great. I can't wait to give it a try. After I got back from the upholstery shop this morning, I dove right into cleaning the camper. I didn't want to put the new mattress up there without giving the moldy headliner a thorough scrub. I did some quick research online and decided to go with a non-caustic water and vinegar solution. Ah, nasty. I put a good bit of elbow grease into it and later I'll hit it with a generous dose of Febreze and it should be good to go. Monday evening after a muggy, sweltering day, cleaning RNG, and Shannon had a long day of work here in the van, we are on our way to Phoenixville, Pennsylvania to get Mexican food at Three Brothers, I think is the name of the restaurant. I can't speak for Shannon, but I have been craving Mexican. We had it all the time when we were down in Tucson for the winter, yeah. and then of course as we came north, just the Mexican food thinned out a good bit. But there are Mexican options around here and we don't know too much about them, but uh, we're gonna give it a go tonight. Wow, Pennsylvania. This looks legit, we'll see. This looks awesome. The price looks perfect. I'm winding down. <laughs> One of these days, when we're sticking around the area, I am going to clear this out either entirely or as much as possible. There's some good stuff in here, and there's just some stuff in here that probably belongs in the trash. Like gross old moldy hats, for instance. It's not all rubbish. I have my kayak, mountain bike, Winnebago ladder, Plenty of serviceable furniture. I found an Arabie and an iPhone 4 that's sticky for some reason. Some original parts from RNG, like the back seat and this old subwoofer, which is perfectly good.
a lot of this stuff was from when I had a sharper sense of style and also a little bit more meat on my bones. That is why we've been eating out so much lately, because it is far more cost effective to just grow back into your old clothes than to have to go shopping for new smaller clothes. This was one of my favorites, but every time I went to Red Lobster, people would summon me for service. Look at that. That actually works. I have to send a picture to Shannon. Fits me okay. Yes, I do want to get rid of most, if not all, of this stuff, but unfortunately right now, I am simply never here to oversee that. Last time I was in this storage unit was about 10 months ago, and we're going to head out again soon, so for the time being, this is just going to have to continue being a museum for a past life, because that's exactly what it is. When I got my storage unit five years ago and moved into the Jeep, I thought, yeah, I'll do venture forward for a while and then I'll probably come back here, pick up where I left off and use this stuff again. And now I don't see that happening. Even if I wasn't making videos and doing venture forward, I don't think I'd ever want to stop mobile living. I don't know if that sounds weird or not, but what I've learned over the past five years is that mobile living is perfectly viable and has greatly improved my mental health. Everyone makes mobile living work in different ways. Shannon's a uh, consultant for the IT industry. I make these travel videos and put them on YouTube. I used to do web development work on the road. I know there are a lot of travel nurses who live and work on the road. So there's more than one way to accomplish this and you don't have to be on social media to make it happen. It's just that first step that's the hardest. Letting go of what feels safe and familiar and taking a leap into the unknown. All right, this is the Switch Pro SP9100 solid state switch panel that I introduced a couple weeks ago. It was installed and configured thus far by Accessory Outfitters in Aloha, Oregon. I already have a switch for my air compressor, my sway bar disconnect, and my battery isolator. And I want to use this bank, this switch right here, to wire my fog lights on my front bumper. Right now my fog lights, which are Baja Design Squadron Pros, are tied into the factory fog light switch on the headlight stalk. I'm gonna keep that functionality, but I'm also gonna create a button for the fog lights here so they can be used independently of the factory headlights. The Switch Pro makes this task dead simple for those of you who are like me and have enough wiring skills to be dangerous. I've started very, very few electrical fires. All of the pigtails I need to wire my 12 volt accessories to the Switch Pro are tucked neatly under the hood next to the fender well here. The instructions show which wire colors correspond with which switch. So we are looking for switch six, and that is navy blue, or just blue. We also need a trigger wire, which is pink. And when the factory lights are turned on, then that will trigger switch six on the Switch Pro. I have this wiring harness that was unused from a different set of lights that I think I will utilize for this modification. I mean, that's ready to go. Run this down to the fog lights, snip it around here for the Switch Pro, and then you have your splitter for the fog lights. This should be easy. I do have to run one additional wire for the Switch Pro trigger, so I'm feeding it all through this protective mesh loom. Okay. 
These are for the factory switch. I'm gonna have to attach the trigger wire to one of these. I'm not sure which yet. So we'll attach our new wiring harness. Should be phase one. Now we'll test it out. All right. All right. Now that the fog lights are on the Switch Pro, we want to restore functionality to the factory switch on the stock. For that, we have a trigger input. So I'm turning to the instructions here. External trigger input to turn on up to four outputs. For example, if connected to the high beam signal, when turning on the high beams on the vehicle, up to four outputs of the switch panel will also turn on. So when we activate the factory switch, the switch on the Switch Pro will also light up. All right, the pink wire coming out of the Switch Pro is the trigger input. And this white wire, which I routed down to the fog lights, is spliced into the factory wiring harness for the fog light switch. So I'm gonna plug these two together and you need to use the app on your phone to program the Switch Pro for the trigger to work. All right, I've got a Bluetooth connection to the Switch Pro using the app on my iPhone. Now I'm going into settings. All right. External trigger setup. Trigger one mode normal, next. Trigger one enabled. Active high, output one, switch six. Next. All right, we don't have a trigger two, so exit. Now when I pull the switch on the steering wheel column, this still unlabeled switch right here should illuminate. So let's give it a go. Yes, perfect. Awesome. Now I just have to tidy up my wiring, clean up, and label the switch panel. And that's all it takes to wire fog lights to the Switch Pro. The nice thing is that once your Switch Pro is installed, you already have your panel on the dashboard. So you no longer have to worry about wiring another switch through the firewall. You can do all your work under hood. On the factory switch, the fog lights are configured to turn off when you turn on your high beams. Now that I have the lights wired independently through the Switch Pro, I can keep the fog lights on with the high beams. Furthermore, I can do this. I don't know when I might need the app on my phone to turn my fog lights on, but I can think of an interesting use case. Let's say I have area lights installed around the Jeep and wired to the Switch Pro. One night I might be up in bed and hear something outside. I could conceivably reach for my phone and very easily turn on the area lights around the Jeep, which would be a really cool feature. Maybe something for the future. Yesterday, off camera, I took the Jeep back to FC Mobile Restorations in Pottstown so they could finish their work. I tasked them with three improvements, the foremost being a new mattress for the camper, but also to repair the big tear in my driver's side seat, and also to reglue the headliner in the cab of the Jeep. It was drooping just a little bit, and since we were at an upholstery shop, it was a good time to take care of that. They did an excellent job. The new mattress in the camper looks great. And you can see here, this is the difference in thickness and the difference in the material. 
This piece is the old two inch mattress and this is the thick new three inch mattress. I love the look of the material. It is a lighter material, so it might be more prone to getting dirty, but that was my call. Since we weren't gonna be in the area for too long, we needed a quick turnaround time, and this light material was the material they had in stock. I never sleep directly on the mattress anyway. This will be covered up by my double sleeping bag most of the time. They also repaired the driver's seat with new foam in the bottom part and also new fabric and stitching on the edge where I slide in and out of the Jeep. The front seat has a new lease on life, but I think I am gonna get seat covers for it so it lasts even longer. There weren't any significant changes to the headliner over the cab, except that it's been re-glued and the fabric is nice and sturdy now. When I put patches on, they're there to stay. I never tug them off. So it was only old age and hot temperatures that caused it to droop. Everything looks fantastic. Huge shout out and thank you to Ashley and Chris at FC Mobile Restorations for doing this work. This looks great. We covered a lot of items on the to-do list this week. Let's see, we've got clean mold, mattress, camper headliner, upholstery, repair torn seat, fixed droopy headliner, custom camper mattress, that completes upholstery. Switch Pro, wire fog lights, install button stickers. I didn't improve A-pillar fitment. That's just a little thing. I need to put in a Christmas tree fastener or something. And that is it for this week. I believe next week I'm taking care of the goose gear and also the winch. So what's the plan from here? Shannon and I are still camped out in my dad's driveway. Tomorrow, we're having a get-together for friends and family to celebrate my mom, who recently passed away. In a couple weeks, I should have this to-do list for RNG mostly complete. And then in early July, Shannon and I are going to hit the road again in the Jeep and the Winnebago Revel. We have a tentative plan to field test RNG someplace in this region. And then after that, travel straight north into Canada travel northwest over the Great Lakes, and then continue west across Canada. Like I said, that's a tentative plan, but that's very much what we hope to do. And we like to find ourselves once again in the Pacific Northwest before the onset of fall, I think. I'm gonna call that a wrap for the week. But just as a reminder, my points of interest for this episode are available on the Thatch app for iOS and Android, and detailed GPS tracks and waypoints are available to Patreon subscribers. I'll put links to Thatch and Patreon in the description for this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch up with you again next week.